Okay, and I think that we are live. They, they, they told me I was not scheduled for like another minute or two. I don't know if it's the, the time that's off on my on my computer. But good evening, everybody. Uh, I am your host this evening, Elam B. King, on the Understanding a Man podcast. And I am super excited uh, about tonight. My lighting is looking really good. I got my, hold on, let me, this is, all, this is doing all right right here. Got my joystick light. Shout out to joystick. All right. Got my joystick light uh, going on right here. It's got me looking uh, pretty good right now. But I'm not going to delay too much. I want to start off by saying thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, of course, this is the Understanding a Man podcast. And I think that for 2022, I'm going <laughs> to I, I, listen. I have a line of guests uh, for you, uh, just to bring you some information as we normally come from an aspect of not only bringing some information, um, from a manly perspective, uh, but also just overall to just bring some information to people, uh, as a whole. And so, uh, in order to, uh, empower our communities, we have to, uh, empower these families and in order for us to empower our families, want to make sure that we are focused on the individuals that are uh, building that, that home as well. And so I have the pleasure this evening of uh, just an individual that I recently uh, was able to connect with. And uh, as I looked at his information, I was like, OK, all right. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, hey, listen, I, if I had to kind of if I had to duplicate myself, OK, uh, this person would just uh, already been running. And if, if anything, I guess I would say that uh, I'm, I'm going to learn a lot from him this evening. Uh, so let me just say 13 time best selling author. Let's start there. All right. I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just rounding <laughs> book three. <laughs> uh, so, but I love that about him. Uh, and he, of course, it, those of you, you might've seen him featured on ABC, uh, BET, CBS, and so all the major, uh, networks he's been on there and also on, uh, I believe the Steve Harvey, uh, show as well. So he's been featured on there as well. Uh, he has a new book coming out called Dear Queen, Volume 2, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But, uh, you know, as here's the thing. I uh, The direction that I want to make sure that we go in uh, moving forward is that we're going to be able to provide some information that's going to allow to empower you not only from a relationship perspective, but just overall individually as well. And I think that that this is something that I just want to I actually start off in the forefront. I want to give him a chance to introduce himself um, uh, of the level of greatness that he's just been out there just talking to people in this space about just themselves and purpose and things of that nature. But uh, uh, I, in this season, I want to make sure that you are, are given some information and this individual has an opportunity of bringing that on board to you. So I want to introduce our guest for this evening, Dr. Eddie Connor. What's up, sir? What's going on, brother? Glad to be with you. <laughs> How are you? Great work. Wonderful, wonderful. You're Man, listen. Glad to be able hey, to listen, don't be show. humble like that because your resume <laughs> is kind of... <laughs> Your resume is kind of lengthy, you know what I'm saying? So um, if, if we could take a moment um, and even just uh, do, I, I don't think that I did you the justice of, uh, of who you are. Um, so I just want to take a moment and give you an opportunity of just introducing yourself. What are you doing? Shaking and moving. Uh, you, you can probably go for like five minutes on that. So just give them the great elevated version <laughs> of, who you, of who you are. Uh, I'll try to trim, trim it down to four minutes, 59 seconds. No, uh, it's, it's great to be able to to share with you on your show, I think is a relevant topic. Your, your show is, is powerful, especially, you know, given us as men and and even our, our sisters who love us, just the, uh, the credulity and also just the insight and the information to uh, be productive citizens in this world. And so, right. um, you know, 2022 marks 22 years of me being cancer free. Um, okay. I'm a living witness, your test of testimony, your misery is ministry, your mess of message, your stumbling block is a stepping stone. God uses your setback as a setup for your greatest comeback. And so I've been able to parlay all of that, uh, finding can and cancer into helping people discover their purpose. Mm. Uh, as you mentioned, 13 time books, uh, best selling book uh, author and uh, mentoring our young brothers, but even our men, too, because, you know, you can't spell mentors without men. Come on, so, sir. Uh, oh, so yeah, you want to? Also, you want to? I, I heard about you and your rhymes. Okay, I heard about you. <laughs> so go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> and, and so, uh, just just really uh, rolling up my sleeves and, and engaging in our community and 
really speaking truth to power and um you know just just helping out where i possibly can and 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 being able to share my story that's what it's about i don't want you to walk past how you started this conversation because before we lead into something uh in the future i want to rest in the moment for first of all thanking god for your presence here um of you battling an area that is just it, ginormous and so i don't even want to uh, speak about it um and, and give it any in any, any level of disrespect i want to make sure that you um take a moment and can you just talk about your battle um inside of that uh cancer space four time um, excuse me in, in stage four cancer yeah. and you sit with us today and that was what year that you were diagnosed with that uh, i was diagnosed uh 1998 1998 and, so that's yeah. 23 24 yeah. years later um yeah, yeah. and you still sit before us so i i thank god for that but um if you can give us the before the during and after um version in that area and just um your your thought process of just moving for that and how did you do that and i know that you have um, one or two books that you talked about as well so if you can share that information with us just share with us um, the reason why that you're the blessing standing before us today. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the toughest and most uh, precarious positions in place I'd ever been in my life, uh, dealing with, you know, that cancer diagnosis. And, you know, oftentimes us as men, boys becoming men even, we see pain as weakness leaving the body. Mm -hmm. I was having chest pains for quite some time, uh, two mm -hmm. years, about two weeks prior to diagnosis. And I didn't want to talk about it because, you know, you got to be tough, got to be a man, don't show any weakness at all. I didn't even want to go to the hospital, uh, mm -hmm. go to get a doctor's appointment, anything. And uh, I'm over my friend's house watching a football game, can't breathe by halftime. Um, it, it literally felt like somebody was stabbing me in my chest. Okay. Uh, his, his mother takes me to the hospital. My mother meets me there. The doctors and nurses are swirling around the, the hospital bed, scratching their head, wondering what's going on. Right. I feel, you know, we, we, we go to surgery immediately after doing a CT scan of the chest, x-ray, and they mm. see my cells and my body are growing so fast they can see them growing with the naked eye mm. uh, around my heart, my trachea, my esophagus, and mm. they removed a tumor. I felt great coming out of surgery. The doctor says, Eddie, you have uh, what we call NHL. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm from the east side of Detroit. You know, I, I know we got the Red Wings here. So I figured <laughs> it was National Hockey League. You right, right, right. And uh, he says, no, you have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I'm like, what in the world is that? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He says, uh, not one, not two, not three, but four, stage four cancer. Mm. And I'm like, stage four cancer? You can't get cancer. Stage four cancer, you 70, 80 years of age. What in the world is going on? And, right. Uh, you know, he says, don't ask why. And that was the question that I was asking for the next two years, chemotherapy, radiation. My own biological father never visited me one day in the hospital. People I thought were praying for me, literally praying on me, uh, expecting my demise. I, I, I'm blessed to beat it, the chemo and the radiation out of school. And uh, I remember I, I was in a convenience store some years after that. A guy walks up to me who I remember from church back in the day. Okay. He says to me, I thought you died. Ooh. I wanted to, I wanted to go oops Not, upside his head and, and slap him like Will Smith did. Y'all was in, you said y'all was in church. No, we were, no, I remembered him from church. I was in a convenience oh, okay. store, but I was, but I was real inconvenienced. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I had, I had some words just then, but go ahead, go ahead. Nah, man, nah, I, 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 I felt uh, anger in my soul that I'd never felt right. before. Right. You know, and uh, I held my composure, but uh, oh, you know, if, if go ahead. right. Yeah, folks just rude, man. So, you know, people go th see your ordeal and, and, you know, have doubt about you being able to make it out. And so I used all that negative steam to, to fuel and power my dream, man. And, and, you know, I was a kid who was told to never go to college now, became a professor right. at a college. And so it's a blessing right. to live through dying places. I want to touch base on one piece because I know us as men, we have um, this thing, you know, the machismo, the the space that exists, whereas we, you know, you said that you felt something beforehand, but you, you, you didn't act on it. If you had to send a message in that area, because I know that we hear that quite often, you know, that uh, pain is a, 
indicator of something going on right but sometimes as men we're shaking and moving uh we have to uh do whatever it doesn't matter um and we don't take the necessary uh steps that need to be taken for um uh, our bodies right so if you had to speak towards that area you know what 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 message would you send there for men and just handling from a from a physical and from a, a health perspective yeah uh, you know getting help seeking support checking out your body doesn't make you less masculine it doesn't mean that you know necessarily something's wrong with you mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just the fact that you you actually have to take inventory of your yourself and you know we always say knowing your worth loving yourself and knowing your worth is only just specifically for women it's for us as men too right you know that healing and that wholeness we have to make sure that we're we're getting clarity about our life our body our soul our spirit whether right. that's counseling whether that's therapy whether that's just visiting your physician right um, because i was at the point of death and didn't even realize it mm. because i refused to ignore the signs because i i was ignoring the signs i refused to go get help Mm -hmm. And even even verbalize, you know, us as men, we don't oftentimes verbalize, we internalize. Come on, sir. And so being able there, to there you, go, there you go with them rhymes again. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, keep, keep, keep going. We don't often verbalize, we internalize. But no, 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 no. no. Let's take a moment on that. And even if we had this, because there's so many many areas that we can go from with that. Often as men, we don't we internalize and we don't verbalize. And I like to uh, a lot of times share with men that uh, even biologically, right? They say that women do 20,000 words a day, men do 5,000 mm -hmm. words a day, right? Um, and then you add on, so that's the biological portion that our communication area is not as large in our brain as women. And y'all can go do the Google on that if you want to, right? So um, we have a space here that uh, we now have a subculture that has existed. We'll just say amongst men, period, right? Mm -hmm. So whereas they, um, you know, don't cry, don't act like a girl, you know, don't be sensitive, don't be emotional, don't hurt, don't have pain. And look how that bleeds over into even the biological piece to where your body is talking to you and you're pushing back because this is what you were taught. And I'm, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but this is something that uh, we, we, on average, we grew up on, right? Um, and so you, then you couple in the fact that even from a relationship perspective, there's other aspects inside of there. And then even if you start talking about culturally based upon what ethnic background you are, and let's just keep it real, um, mm -hmm. us as a people, mm -hmm. as black men, we are, even, it's kind of like an even, a more of a subset of what? You being sensitive? You in pain? Nah, we, we, we push through this stuff. I mean, am, am I wrong? Yeah, you're totally right. You're totally right. And so, so that actually bled into your your health oh yeah and and really what we're doing is we're crying inside mm. you know we're, we're suffering in silence because even during that time of the my ordeal with cancer i was still grappling with the, the divorce of my parents you okay know, my father was was present physically he was absent mentally spiritually socially emotionally and the question okay. becomes how do you become a man if you don't see one how do you play a role if you weren't given a script mm. and so dealing with all of that if you want to say it, even the trauma, the toxicity, the, the, the emotional triggers inside that even I was too young enough to realize and recognize much less even right. embrace. Right. And, and looking back on it, uh, hindsight being 2020, right. um, that, that there was some healing that needed to take place. There was some forgiveness that needed to take place. I had to move right. into a space and place of wholeness if right. I was really going to be uh, complete and, and total as a man. And and it, it, it if if we can actually expand upon that. So first of all, again, I want to congratulate you for just uh, your presence even with us today, and thank you so much for just walking the journey that you walked. And I I I um I before we kind of shift over, uh, which one of your books did you speak about regarding in 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 your journey in this space? Yeah, yeah, it was it was the first book I ever wrote called uh, Finding the Can and Cancer. Finding the can and cans. And cancer. Finding the can and cancer. Okay. And where can people right. find that? Uh, it's on Amazon. Yep. It's on okay. Amazon and even uh, on my, one of my websites, eddiecona.com forward slash shop. Okay. So um, it, it was a, it was a, the, probably the toughest book I ever wrote because it was the first one, but it mm -hmm. also became transparent 
it, it got me into a level of transparency and 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 therapeutic for me. Uh, right. Because I was actually healing as I was writing. I was actually identifying the things uh, that were traumatic and, and triggering for me in my life, and I had to forgive to really mm -hmm. live. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. So, see, there you go with it. See, every now and then you slide them in there. Forgive the list. See, I'm, I'm, I'm people them. I'm about to make like a little, uh, a little, a little dictionary, a little thesaurus over here with you. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you got to forgive to live. All right, y'all. Write that one down. You got to forgive to live. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go forward with that because I like that. Right. Um, let's look at um, the, the the space of even inside of this. Uh, what were you, you're talking about a tough time that you were going through, clearly. Where were you purpose-wise? Um, you know, what were you doing in life? Did you just sit down? Did you, um, did you find yourself, you know, in a, a depression-wise? Where was your state of mind? Even before we kind of transitioned to some other pieces that we want to talk about, where were you mentally, um, you know, spiritually? How did you, how are you here from that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you, you're talking to a guy whose favorite two class in school in high school with Jim and lunch. You know, <laughs> I want to chase some girls Come and on, Jim and lunch. <laughs> sit down and eat with him at lunch. On Friday. Man. That's so, what's up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I always knew I had a little knack for words, this, that, and the other, but I, I emoting on paper and, and doing all of that was not necessarily something I was really trying to do. I was just wanted to play sports. And, um, you know, I'm in college with dialing a dream to my name in my, in a dorm room. And my last year, my mother's calling me and she's telling me, and she's been telling me for a few years, you need to write your story. And I said, no, in high I school, write my story. This uh, is high school. Now this is, now this is by the time I get to college. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm in my senior year of college. Okay. And uh, she she'd been telling me for a few years, even prior, you need to write your story. And I said, no, I don't want to tell anybody about what I'd gone through my ordeal of cancer. It was embarrassing for me uh, about the mm -hmm. struggle. And um, at what age were you in that struggle? Uh, literally from about fifteen to seventeen. Roughly. Wow, let's yeah. just let whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So this is I I I I don't I I my assumption, I thought that you were in adulthood. So you were battling this during your oh, teenage yeah. years. Teenage years out of school, my sophomore year, and uh mm. you know, just a tough deal dealing with identity crisis. You know, uh you know, you you fighting for your life when it's seemingly you're just beginning your life. Mhm. Mm you know, and you asking yourself, hey, will I ever play on the basketball team again? Will I be able to go to the prom? You know, will I right. see my next birthday? Um, depression mm. that, that that I was in, you know, you watching yourself lose your hair and your self-esteem, your self-confidence, mm. you know, just all going down the drain. And, and um, you know, blessed to be able to beat cancer and, and find the can of cancer, as I was saying. But, um, you know, being able to write my story now it became more so me freeing myself from emotional <laughs> incarceration. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And and the, the psychological imprisonment that I was in. Uh, and and at such a young age, and I want I want to highlight that and that, you know, I, I want to encourage our um our our listeners to just even maybe forward this to anybody who um has a young child that is battling. It does not have to be in this specific space. But we're going to say that um, the, just the topic that's at hand, obviously, is something that is, is a tough area. I don't think I think tough is like a little disrespectful to even use as a, as a word. But this is an area that you were battling in in the teenage years and um, and still forge forward. How did you connect and move from that to where you are today? If you can have if you could give some steps and maybe it's inside of one of your books. So feel free to, to share that. How did you move from that um, space of, of, of turmoil and just uh, fighting for your life? How did you move from that to walking inside of your purpose today? Yeah. You know, it is, uh, you know, the grace of God. It, it mm -hmm. really is. You know, Langston Hughes said, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. And so to be able to, um, stare those broken stares in the face 
and, and keep walking and keep moving. Um, it, it is the, uh, the love of a mother who, my mother who, who fought for me and really made me beat cancer when I didn't want to. I was ready to give up. I was ready to throw in the towel. Mm. It's her love for me that made me fight. Uh, I saw a time she was h- fighting harder for me than I was fighting for myself. Right. And so uh, I decided to allow that fighting spirit and, and discover it. You know, sometimes you don't know how strong you are until being strong is your only option. And I had no other option. You know, my mother would tell me, hey, you know, a, a life is, uh, everybody gets knocked down in life, but a knockdown is not a knockout unless you stay down. So right. really getting back up again and pushing myself past the, uh, you know, the the cataclysmic extirpation, so to speak, that I was experiencing. Um, and, and then saying, you know what, you know, every breath is a blessing. I'm one day closer to treatment. I'm one treatment closer to, to, to total healing rather. And, um, discovering that I have a purpose and, and oftentimes what you go through, yes, it's painful, but it becomes right. purposeful. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go your rhyme. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bring it together. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Yeah, what's painful becomes purposeful because the, th- the thing is this, your story is not for you. It's to bless somebody else. Come on, sir. Okay, yeah. you want to do, you want to have Bible study on Monday <laughs> night. Okay, so we just had Easter <laughs> yesterday. And so now you want to just bring the, this, okay, this is part two of the, me- go ahead, sir. Go ahead. You, hey, man, it's your resurrection. You know what I'm saying? Uh, come, you ah, you want to keep going <laughs> with it? Okay, okay. Come on, sir. Nah, for real. <laughs> okay, come on. And, and yeah, yeah, Jen yeah. Hamlin, I appreciate you joining. She said, hey, the same thing. What's painful becomes purposeful. Go ahead with that, sir. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt. I mean, we, we've all experienced our, our, our good Friday moments in, in bad situations. We, we've been in, in the grave of whatever whatever that grave was, a divorce, whatever that, that stage four was cancer for me. Some of, sometimes when the abuse is a stage four situation, the, the mistreatment right. and the heartache is a stage four situation. But being right. able to rise again from it, you know, everybody, uh, you know, a, a setback is a setup for a greater comeback. You know, the okay. big Sean said last night took a L, but tonight I bounce back, you know, being able to bounce back from a setback. OK. And rise again um, to the occasion is what it's all about. OK. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I have found the dolomite of uh <laughs> 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 of this space right here i'm loving it now I'm, I'm, but uh in all seriousness i, w- I want to share that you know what you're sharing um right now is kind of like a path forward i think that one of the things if we go back to this to what we were talking about in the beginning of how you know um men were kind of maybe misguided from a subculture perspective okay and then uh, from there we have um a transition that's happening we have so many people that's in a you know a mental illness uh space to whereas they like you said internalize instead of verbalize right Mm -hmm. and i think that it's important to share the stories of uh of of what some of us have been through and 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 i i'm gonna say i love your story because of the tough area that it came from um and how you're still able to forge forward um and uh, one of the things that you talked about in, uh, in, in, I don't know, it was a podcast, something that you were doing, you were talking about the bamboo tree and you were talking yeah, about, yeah. you know, digging in roots and you were talking about, um, you know, the bamboo tree. And those of you who don't know, just to give you the elevator version, it takes a, a, a bamboo tree, I believe, about five years before you get, once you plant it, it takes about five years before you're even going to see it break ground. But when you finally see it break ground in the first like 80 to 90 like days, it can grow like six, 10, the, an amazing amount of footage. Um, and my homeboy had one in his backyard. He was like, yo, if it rains at four o'clock uh, at, at, at seven o'clock, you can see like the, the bamboo tree grow like so fast or whatever. Wow. Right. And wow. So I want you to just just kind of talk about that. And um, maybe during the, that time frame, would you say that you were actually and as as much pain as you were in, you were taking root to grow forward from there. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, without a doubt. I think that's a great example. You know, that, that bamboo tree can grow uh, 80 feet in six weeks. And the thing is, it, it took longer to grow than the other trees because the roots had to be deeper right, for it to grow higher. 
And right. I think one thing is this, a lot of times we're comparing our chapter one to somebody else's chapter 30. You know, they, oh. they, they uh, may develop faster. They may grow seemingly faster. They may be blessed quicker than seemingly we are. And we're looking at them versus what we need to be looking at him. We need to be looking right. and focused on our purpose. Right. Uh, and, and recognizing that, you know, your race is not somebody else's race. The race is not oh. given to the swift or to the strong but the one that endures to the end. Come on. You may have to run a little bit longer. That Come person on, may man. have a sprint. You may have a marathon, right? And so uh, it is about building your endurance. It's about getting uh, rooted even deeper. It's about, uh, you know, checking the mental space and place of where it is that you are. Uh, you know, even thinking about mental health, you know, mental health is uh, that the aspect, the, the prefixes of both of them are men heal. You know, and oftentimes vulnerability and masculinity cannot coexist in the same space. Mm. Oftentimes that vulnerability is seen I'm as I'm about to throw this microphone. I'm about to throw it. I'm about to throw the microphone. Don't do that. Okay, so I keep, going, keep, keep going. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, man. You know, uh, the oftentimes vulnerability is seen as femininity. And I think one of the things yes. that us as men struggle with is, yes. is being vulnerable, being able to talk about what it is that we have experienced. Can we rest there in the vulnerability of just men, maybe not? If we had to speak to, I don't care if they're young, I don't care if they're, you know, more seasoned or whatever case it be. If we just had to talk about that level of vulnerability, I don't know where I should be mm. right now. I've had life situations happen to me, um, no matter whether it's illness or whether it's finances, no matter whether it's I had to live on a park bench, no matter whether it's you know, I've had multiple degrees and I still don't understand where I'm at. If you had to give a path forward in that space of, uh, you know, what does it look like to transition out of? I don't understand. I don't know. Or I'm hurt or I have this pain or these challenges going on. What would what 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 what, what advice would you give uh, to a man? And that's but really you can say it to people. But I want to more speak to my men right now um, of of forge forward because considering where you came from there is no more starting from the bottom now we hear like you were at mm. the bottom stage four right what's bigger than that stage five right so you're talking about from you you came from negative one in my opinion you, you came from negative four um to where you are today so how, how do i how do i do that how do i get there it's a great question. I think uh, everybody's path is different. Uh, for me, uh, there were it, it was a lot of isolation. You know, um, for me, it was, you know, being isolated from friends, isolated from even family members, isolated because I couldn't even go to school with everybody else. Mm. And, you know, I had so much time to think, process evaluate myself, look at my shortcomings, come to terms and grips with my own mortality. And um, I think in isolation is, is revelation, you know, and isolation is elevation as well. And I think one thing is what we have to do, you know, in the midst of, you know, sometimes the turmoil that we're trying to process and, and the trauma that we're trying to, you know, uh, get through, Right. Uh, is be able to take off the mask of what it is that we're wearing, because a lot of times, you know, we acting like we're dressed okay. up, but we're messed up. You know, okay. we're, we're acting like, you know, everything is all dandy. This is fine. And we know how to put on a, a facade and an act for everybody else. And, and everything you post on social media are your highlights is never your failures. You know, we, we have these filters that we wear in life. And actually being able to take off the mask and look at the ugly things that took place and transpired in my own life Okay, uh, is how I was able to do the healing and to say, listen, nobody's going to, what, what you went through. Yeah. That may have been brought on by somebody else, but healing is your responsibility. Oh, Oh, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a whole moment. Hold on. Wait, wait, <laughs> no, no, no. don't just glide by something like that. Hold on. Let's, let's go. Rewind that. I don't want to say it because I, I can't say it like you say it, but I'm going to in the future. I'm going to say this and I'm not giving you any credit. I'm just I'm going to say it like it was mine. 
<laughs> healing is your responsibility. Okay. No, but no, but rewind back. But uh, what'd you just say? What'd you say? <laughs> what 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 people have done to us, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, those things have transpired. Sometimes that brings on insecurity. Mm -hmm. But healing is our responsibility. Mm. If you're gonna move into a place of true healing, wholeness, wellness, togetherness internally. Healing is going to be a part of your responsibility. You've got to get ownership of that, and that's maturational development. Mm. So, I want to make sure that we're sending a, a clear message here. All right, um, for those that might be in a space of um, walking through healing, whether it's um, within their body, uh, from a biological perspective, or whether it's through uh, from some maybe some relationships that you might have been through or whatever, um, it sounds good right? Healing is your responsibility. If you had to give me step one and two, uh, what does healing, uh, how do I walk forward in healing as a man? And I'm, 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 I want to be specific there because again, because we do internalize, because we don't, you know, share on the way that we feel, because we don't even know that we don't know. Um, and, 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 but we feel some type of way and it can bleed out in alcohol. It can bleed out in drugs. It can bleed out in, in so many different ways. It can be now bleed out in, in violence, right? If we had to throw, throw the, throw a rope, um, to help individuals kind of walk through that space. Um, how do I begin to heal? How did, what does that look like? Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of us are, are carrying father wounds, you know, mm -hmm. whether the father was there or whether he was not there. For mm -hmm. me, you know, even as I look back in retrospect, I, I was carrying a lot of that. And um, one thing is, is I understand and realize that a lot of stress, a lot of mm -hmm. anxiety, a lot of, you know, emotional turmoil was internalized within me that I had not dealt with, analyzed, freed myself of and i really could not heal until i forgave i had to mm -hmm. forgive my father for not visiting me one day in the hospital i had to give i had to forgive people who i thought would be there for me but turned their back on me i had to mm -hmm. especially as even forgiving my father i had to give him i had to forgive him and really accept an apology from him that he never gave at that point Okay. Sometimes you have to forgive people. You have to forgive people before they even give you an apology, because okay. forgiveness Ooh. is freedom. Forgiveness is not necessarily for them. Forgiveness is for you. That bitterness is like drinking poison. That's the second you time I heard that person. today. That's crazy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ooh, that's the, go ahead. Yeah, that, that drink. You know, bitterness is like drinking poison. Expect somebody else to deal with the side effects of it. No, mm -hmm. it's going to affect you. And my healing had to take place mentally, psychologically emotionally before right. it ever transpired physically right yeah. and so that that's kind of the main foundational elements okay and so uh i want to end on the topic of, uh, of of dealing with uh the the house from a mentorship from a counseling uh, space as well i believe that we're entering into a a, a better culture of um of knowing that we need to, to speak with somebody else besides ourselves uh, and that we need to, you know, have whether it's mentorship or whether it's being in council or what have you, I believe that we're, we're getting into a better space there. Uh, if, if you had to speak towards just dealing with uh, a, a, another space that's there of, of walking with someone else, mentoring wise and counseling wise, what would be your, uh, some of your advice in that area? You know, I, I would say, uh, look for an accountability partner. Uh, okay. As I was saying before, you know, men need mentors. And a lot of times we think mentorship is just from older to younger. But who's going to help us, you know, when you hit your late 30s, your 40s, mm -hmm. your 50s, you know, your 60s, there's still development that takes place as a man that we need to uh, get in, connect, in connection with other brothers who have been down where we're trying to go. Right. You know, iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. And I think being able to to talk, whether it's barbershop talk or just being able to uh, 
uh, connect with a, another brother who can really understand and, and, and strengthen you, bear your infirmities, give you some insight, or, or even if he doesn't have the answer, mm -hmm. just a sounding board. And uh, I think with that, you also have to be able to ingratiate uh, therapy, counseling. An emotionally intelligent man does not shun it. He embraces it. Come on. Come on. Which are any one of your books kind of walk down this path uh, that they, they can give them give them some guidance in this area? Any one of your, your projects that you you already worked on that you can uh, share with the public? Yeah, without a doubt, it's a, a book called My Brother's Keeper. Okay, uh, which really uh, speaks truth to power for our boys, but also our men about the the healing that needs to take place internally. And then I've I've got a new book coming out in, in the next couple of months. Okay. specifically dedicated to men okay uh, about masculinity vulnerability and, and personal responsibility so, okay um, yeah yeah so i'm i'm working so on, what's, the, I'm, I'm working what's, on the, what's it called what's it called what's it called i'm i'm still working on the title i'm still okay. working on the title but uh, i yeah. i get it you know hey listen <laughs> sometimes as creators we'll get all the information yeah. out and some right. of the light stuff we were sitting there like what's this title what should this title yeah, be yeah. we got the whole thing written <laughs> I'm right there as well. I'm, I'm juggling um, a few titles. I got to see which one I'm going to go with. What is that? I was just saying I'm juggling a few titles. I got to see which one I'm going to pin down and go with. So I, I, let, let's just, I want to tiptoe into relationships for a second, right? And so um, in that space, man, I was listening to you, uh, did some stuff that you was talking about on Instagram, man, and you was just kind of going in. And so you said something that I want to make sure I quote this correctly. You said, marriage is merger ministry and mirror you can't say something like that we i i, I you gotta break <laughs> that down right there that I, this that, that's that that that's amazing um and at this point all of the listeners that are here i want to thank you again for just understanding joining the understanding a man podcast you need to share at this point because this right here is some information. I don't even know what he's going to say, but I love the way that that flowed of marriage is murder, ministry, and mirror. That right there is amazing. Man, it, it, talk to the people. That, what is that? What was that about? That was, that was a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, we're, we're living in a day and age where uh, people are more enamored with a wedding than, a, than actual marriage. Marriage is a marriage. Oh, Sir. Wedding is a sprint. And so carrots without character is chaotic. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll go ahead and say, you know, with marriage being a merger, it's two becoming one, you know, two becoming one flesh. Scripture says you got to leave to clean. Come on. And so sir. that's that's the combination of everything. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, the ministry aspect of it is you always go out of business in any relationship, much less a marriage. If you come from the perspective of being served rather than serving you know you mm. you got to come to the table of marriage really as a as a waiter or waitress rather than just a customer you know it's it's about what can i do to help this person to meet their needs you know being able to understand what their particular love language is uh so that you know there's a there's a level of communication that's not miscommunicated and then i think even with the mirror you know uh, Whoever you are in your singleness is going to even lead to marital bliss or marital or uh, a marital mess. Okay. And the mirror aspect is, you know, marriage is not going to only expose the beauty. You know, we know the beauty of the trips and the the the, uh, the photos yeah, on I social look, media, this video, all that stuff. Yeah, yep. Right, right, right. But there's also the mirror of it. It exposes the ugly too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. Uh, you know, two heads is a monster. Oh. <laughs> and so oh. being able to uh, really, really understand, you know, we always talk about, we say these vows for better or for worse. We know what for better is, but we have not necessarily defined what for worse is. Ah, so let me just take a moment here. This is the, <laughs> the space that I, I want to emphasize. And so here's the thing. So August... 
and September are the major months that people get married. So right now we have people that are gearing up for that August and September time frame. They're looking at the dress and they're looking at the tux and they're looking at the court and they're looking at, you know, the destination and and and, and the flowers and all this and all that extra stuff, right? And so um being in the uh, the pre-marriage coaching space, um what has happened uh at times is that you have some people who um, they might show up to to Elam maybe like July and they're getting married in August after they've done everything else of, of with preparing for the, the marriage. They start talking about the, the pre-marriage coaching phase. And so what, what I find it, it interesting is that, OK, so the piece that's kind of most important that helps you design your path forward you're going to come in the 11th hour. Okay, that's mm, fine. Wow. I'm used to it, right? <laughs> um, but I, I I want to kind of take a moment and talk about that because when you're talking about how marriage is a merger, when you're talking about that it is a ministry, um, when you're talking about the reflection that exists there, one of the things that I've noticed is that people don't understand what their reflection is because they don't understand themselves. One of the number one people that does not show up inside of most relationships is yourself. And so um, then your ministry to the individual, if I just use, you know, your analogy, your ministry to the individual is is false. Um, and they, they don't I have an understanding of exactly who you are. And so that merger that you bring together is not one that has uh, a concrete foundation. And so if you had to just take a moment and maybe just speak to the people who might um, be you know they're engaged and they're they're, they're walking in this space and you know they want to get married and all this and that and that the, the glamour and the glitz and the gold and all that but um is, is there what what caution light would you throw or maybe what 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 advice would you give to individuals in this space well i think one of the things that a lot of times we go into marriage doing we just solely marry for love and love is not enough you know, love is a thread, purpose is the glue. And too many times we're gorilla glue to the wrong one because we're only going off of the material. We're only going off the superficial. You're mm. focused on the body, but not the mentality. You're focused on Wait, the what was that gorilla glue? What was that what was that gorilla glue? Say that again. What, what was that? <laughs> so, so you gorilla glue to the wrong one. Okay, all right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. That's funny. And you know, we're 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 focused on, you know cleavage but not character height but not heart you know okay. uh beyond his wallet how is his wisdom beyond what he drives what's driving him you know but it, no, you know, no 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 don't do that you're not, you're not gonna say nothing like that uh, beyond his <laughs> beyond what he's driving what's driving him i i'm sorry go ahead i'm not gonna let you get away <laughs> with all of them i'm gonna I'm I'm highlight some of them but go ahead <laughs> Yeah, be, be, beyond her her nice glasses and spectacles, what what does she, you know? Does she have a vision that that complements yours? As a matter of fact, can she Come adhere on, to your vision that you have? And so, uh, you know, I think we 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 have to ask the real tough questions, right? You know, uh, uh, you know about how you were raised. How do you actually? Um, what is your vision for the future? Mm. Uh, Come on. You know, finances. You know, when you think about it, you know, finances, sex. Um, and then communication, one of the three main pitfalls for why marriages are dissolved. Um, you know, being being able to actually really have some real tough questions and being able to deal with that and, and deal with some of the answers that you may not necessarily want to hear. Come on, and not deal with the answer, y'all. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing. That That's why I just say when people, those of you that just do this, I, I just have to jump in here just really quickly because mm -hmm. it's so frustrating. How is it? That some people come to the pre-marriage counseling coaching area at the end. So what if we identify that this thing is is not like a good idea, and you've just paid all this money to do it? And I always say to men, okay, so help me with with this really quick, Eddie, uh, Doctor Connor. Excuse me, Doctor Connor. Let's make sure we say this correctly, Doctor Connor. Let me make sure I say this correctly. Why would a man go out here? And buy a ring. Uh, uh, what, what did uh, Kelly say earlier? Carrots without character is chaotic. And I 
totally agree with that, right? Um, why would you go out there, a man, and focus on buying the carrots that she wants or whatever case to be, and you haven't qualified this person beyond the sex, beyond the what they might look like? Beyond that your mother likes them, you know, beyond, like you just said something regard to it sound like that it was familiar, right? Family wise, generational wise, right? Have you really done the research inside of that family um, to just know, you know, some of the, you said something about that a second ago. Um, and I think that that's important. Do you remember? Yeah, that? yeah, or, yeah. I, I was saying something to the degree of, you know, just being able to to ask the questions. You know, yes, the tough questions. Like, yeah, yeah, being, yeah. You know, whether it's divorce in the home, whether it's abuse that you may have experienced, mm -hmm. whether it is, you know, your vision for the future. Beyond, you know, we, we ask a lot of superficial questions, but we don't get mm -hmm. to the real depth and the real root of it. And a right. lot of times, people are marrying out of obligation. A lot of times, people being are uh, marrying simply because you're feeling societal pressure. Or that, Come on. that 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 TikTok is going off, and now you Come realize on. you need to have a child by a certain age. You going up, right. to the, You know, you keep going to the dinner table on Thanksgiving, and grandma and them saying, "When you gonna get married again?" And all of that, and sometimes you're forced into by people who don't even enjoy the marriage that they're in. Mm. They want you to join the quote unquote fraternity or sorority of marriage <laughs> because it's trying to put it in folks who are already miserable. <laughs> so, oh man! You know, I, I I think at the end of the day, it's mm -hmm. better to wait long than to marry wrong. Ah, uh, I want to. Somebody <laughs> type that one in. That's the buried it. Bet ah, uh, okay. <laughs> do, do your, and, and really, it's do your due diligence. Um, yeah. and I want to be. Um, I can. I, I want to be very clear in this area um and as you're speaking this is about doing your due diligence is really what yeah. you're speaking about yeah you, you yeah and, and you know it's going to take prayer it's going to take discernment it's going to take being able to go through the seasons with people too mm -hmm. you know, spring summer winter and fall you know you see maybe somebody's attitude is springing up in the spring mm -hmm. in, in the summer they want to be a hot boy a hot girl summer you know in the <laughs> fall they fall back in the winter right. they feel like a loser you know, yeah, it's cuffing, it gets cuffing season, season about August, September. It's cuffing season around that yeah. time. Right, right now, right. folks trying to release and go have the hot boy and hot girl summer. And and and, and here's yeah. the thing: and we've yeah. been in seclusion for two years, so folks, it's like, yeah. nah, it's, that's not gonna work. Yeah. Um, it's true. Yeah. So it, listen, this is going to be. Uh, I, I think we might have to have uh, Dr. Connor back on. Uh, <laughs> very soon um <laughs> this is gonna be the beginning of a host of guests that we're gonna have on the understanding a man podcast and of course those of you those of you who follow us on spotify and our anchor um, uh, thank you so much and just please continue to subscribe and share um as much as possible but i want to uh take a moment and just say thank you so much um this is just this is he don't even know it but dr connor's this is part one of him that we don't we gonna have to we're going to have to oh, yeah, keep yeah. having some conversation there, sir. Oh, but no, um, no, here's no. the thing. You're currently working on a project, and then I know you have some other projects that are in the works. Um, if you could just let everybody know where they can find you um, and uh, what projects that you're working on, that would be amazing. Without a doubt. Uh, listen, bro, I appreciate you. You know, your your last name isn't king for just no apparent reason uh, mm -hmm. because you do wear your crown and you're able to speak to the king uh, in the kid. You're able to speak to the king in us as men. and so. I really appreciate you for the, for what you do and, and also the opportunity to be able to share, you know, on your powerful podcast. Um, you know, I'm doing an academy, an online academy where we focus on faith, identity, relationships, speaker training. We have conversations and discussions like this one uh, where we do the healing, the, the, the emotional um, transparency and, and healing and the uh, power to move into your purpose and giving you all of the insight of what it takes to really make life work uh, beyond where you are right now. You can go simply to DrEddieAcademy.com to join us. We have uh, classes every single week um, that we that we focus on many of these topics, trauma and triggers, how to understand a man, communication, so many other topics as well, DrEddieAcademy.com. And then connect with me, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, at Eddie Connor, Jr. And then, my new book is out. 
Yes, sir. One on Amazon, Dear Queen Volume 2, How to Wear Your Crown, Walking Authority, and Authenticity. So, man, that's a uh, sexy cover. Hold that up again, man. That's a, that's, a, that's a sexy little cover there, man. I like that. I like that. I appreciate um, it. I appreciate it, yeah. And the overview, if you had to give us the jacket version of what this book is about, talk to us. Yeah, it, it really is uh, re bringing real reevaluation to how we love our sisters in this age of, you know, uh, hyper masculinity, red pill conversation, and then even the social media type of conversations that demean black women, especially. It's about how to lift them up, how to love them uh, through mm -hmm. what they go through. And then it's also how we as men can work better and strengthen our relationships with our sisters as well. Man, so uh, here's the thing. I think that you're going to have to come back and just talk about that book in our next segment. Oh, yeah. Because oh, I glad. think that that first part we can go from the the the, the Oscars to uh, to just <laughs> so much build up um, period. So we're gonna have to bring you back um, and just to just talk about uh, if you can hold the book up again. Um, and it and it's called uh, Dear Queen, and this is Volume Two. And Volume One came out beforehand, or what? Volume one came out about five years ago in 2017. Okay. And I thought it, I'd never write another volume to that. But uh, that was focused on uh, jewels to uh, wear your crown and then uh, love yourself and know your worth. And so uh, th they're both available on Amazon. Okay. Okay. As ebook, audio book, um, as well as a hard copy. Listen, I, I, I think, you, yeah, hey, y'all got to get volume one and volume two. Um, and we're gonna come back on and just probably talk about that. And I, I want uh, our listeners that um, if you could just share this with just you know just one gentleman that you might feel like that might be blessed from uh, just receiving the information uh, from Dr. Connor. And we're gonna come back in a couple of weeks. Uh, and by, we're gonna be next week. He just don't know it. But we're gonna come <laughs> back in like a week or so, and uh, you know, we, we, in a couple of weeks next week. So we're gonna uh, and and talk about <laughs> uh, Dear Queen Volume Two. And, uh, you know, just kind of continue to share some information again. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Connor, for joining us. And tell them how they can follow you. Yeah, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Eddie Connor Jr. Put some respect on my name, E-D-D-I-E-C-O-N-N-O-R-J-R. -E and join my academy, DrEddieAcademy.com. And those of you who are watching on YouTube and on and live, you can see you can go to uh, DrEddieAcademy.com to get all the information that he shared this evening. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Connor, for just coming on this evening and sharing with us uh, on the Understanding a Man podcast. And uh, we uh, stay tuned for um, part two of this conversation. <laughs> Because listen, I only came for part one. Well, listen, I want to hear a little bit more about Dear Queen. You know, that's that's yeah, that's yeah, serious yeah. business, man. So that's uh, that's good stuff, sir. And I also want to hear about Unwrap the Gift in You. I was going to talk about that too. That's one of your other books, but we'll we'll talk about that later. I'm about to fade on out on the folks, so whatever. But uh, thank you guys so much for joining, and uh, uh, we will talk to you soon. <laughs>